1781, three years of bitter reverses, and George Washington still fought on against tremendous odds. Many of our troops are so nearly naked that they cannot leave their quarters. Even my officers are in such dire distress. Colonel Silver to Mr. Robert Morris, sir. Ah, I'm glad to see you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. We have bad news, sir. Yes? The militia are deserting in hundreds and marching to Philadelphia to lay their claims before Congress. They say that if money isn't raised to pay them, feed them, and clothe them properly, they'll lay down their arms and surrender to the enemy. Harsh measures are needed, sir. Not harsh measures. But money is needed most of all. I was just writing an appeal to Congress. Congress with an empty treasury. It must be replenished. As superintendent of finance, I can assure you, General Washington, that I have exhausted every possible source of revenue. We're living in times of sacrifice, Mr. Morris. Those patriots who've given before must give again. Colonel Tillman. Sir. Make ready to ride at once to Philadelphia. I want you to deliver a message to I'm Solomon. Mr. Heim Salomon here. Yes, but the Holy. I'm sorry, but I must see him. General Washington's orders. Colonel Tillman, Mr. Salomon. What is it? Why are you here? I have an important message from General Washington. Will you open it, please? Hi. Have you forgotten that this is the eve of atonement? I'm sorry, Rabbi, but this is very urgent. This is of greater urgency than our holy service. Forgive me, Rabbi, but this gentleman brings a message from General Washington. Washington? Yes, Rabbi. May I speak to the congregation? An appeal from General Washington must be heeded. God will forgive us. My friends, the struggle for our independence is in danger of being lost. General Washington has no money, food or clothing for his ragged army. He has asked us to help him raise the $400,000 he so badly needs. I know that you've given even beyond your means, but now we must give again. It isn't charity, I ask. It's an offering to the cause of liberty, a cause sacred to us above all others, because centuries of bitter persecution have taught us the value of liberty. If we want to continue living as free men in a free land, if we want to bequeath to our children this priceless heritage, then we must give. It is not our duty to leave wealth to our children. It is our duty to leave them liberty. I... I can raise 10,000 on my store. You can have that, Mr. Solomon. It is too much, Mr. Lyons. You have already given two sons. Yes. But I want to be sure they did not die in vain. I'll sell my crops. That will bring at least 6,000. 6,000? To be added to the arm you left at Brandywine. Time. I can raise 1,000. Mr. Solomon, I still have $400 of the money my husband left me. If you give that to General Washington, how will you live? Never mind. God will take care of me. Rich and poor of every faith and creed contributed to Hein Solomon to aid this great cause. That makes a total of $368,500. Still leaves us a bit shy. How much did our fees come to on that last shipment of Virginia tobacco? Thirty-five thousand. A 
multiply that to make up the necessary amount. Very good, sir. We must get the money to General Washington's headquarters at once. Mr. Morris has arranged for military... Gentlemen of the Congress, on Thursday died our friend, Haim Solomon, a patriot. He was indeed our friend. With a generous hand, he cast his entire fortune to a cause in which we believe. He gave us his all and died almost penniless. The debt we owe him is so great that we can never hope to repay him. But if we zealously guard and keep inviolate the liberty, the equality, those basic human rights that he fought with us to establish, then Haim Solomon, our little friend from Front Street, will feel that his great sacrifice was not in vain.